We had a security. We have a security briefing today on the extension of martial law, and uh, all of our security officials are actually in the lounge uh, discussing the problems that we're having in the south. But uh, with that said, uh, pleasant good morning to everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, we'd like to call the committee on uh, this hearing and the committee on cooperatives to order. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask my comsec to come forward. Oh, Archie. Yeah. <laughs> to recognize all those that are here today uh, in this morning session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have the honor to present to you and to this committee, our guest for this meeting. Um, from, from, the from the Consolidated Cooperative Bank, Cooperatives Insurance System of the Philippines, we have Mr. Isagani Daba. Um, morning, sir. And from the Cooperative Banks Federation of the Philippines, um, we have Attorney Hubert Molina and Mr. Potential Consolation. From the Bukid Non Cooperative Bank, we are joined by Attorney Francis Rivera and Mr. Calixto Dacchiado. From the Network Consolidated Cooperatives Bank, we have Ms. Sylvia Paraguya. From the PDIC, um, from, yes, we have Attorney Grace Magdalis, Ms. Eden Dizon, and Attorney Antoinette Bolivar. From the Cooperative Development Authority, we have Chairman Orlando Ravanera. And from the BSP, we have Ms. Chuchi Fonashier and Ms. Attorney Tiongo Lagario. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, we are joined by Mr. Arthur Henavia and Ms. Glicerio Angeles. And last but not the least, we have um, the representatives of the Cooperative Bank of Misamis Oriental, Mr. Edgardo Gamolo and Attorney Isidro Lico. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. I did prepare an opening statement. Uh, please bear with me. First of all, today I'm pleased to welcome you in the meeting for the for our committee on cooperatives. Um, I was well. We hold this meeting to review and assess the status of cooperative banks, uh, particularly in the process of consolidation entered into some of its members. And uh, I was approached, uh, to be honest, I was approached by some of those that were in the process of being consolidated. And so I want to be aware on the um, framework uh, done by the three agencies, I believe Central Bank, PDIC, and, um, or BSP rather, uh, B uh, PDIC and the CDA. Uh, but particularly, there was one cooperative, well, you know that I come from Bukidnon, so obviously, um, this gentleman had approached my father, and my father had called me, I'm only my father's son, <laughs> even if I'm Senator of the Republic. But uh, he had asked me to uh, look into uh, this issue uh, without taking sides, but listening to all sides concerned, so that we have a smooth flow of um, um, processes for these particular mergers. I believe the mergers are not only being done to cooperative banks, but I believe I was reading an article in the newspapers, even rural banks. The BSP is also trying to, con to consolidate rural banks, yes. So, <clears throat> um, with that, I'd probably withhold this lengthy statement and go straight to the point. And uh, probably go ask uh, the BSP first, being the lead agency on the consolidation uh, uh, process of all these uh, cooperative banks. And then of course, we'll recognize the chairman and we'll recognize uh, the PDIC. So starting with the B BSP, uh, who would like to uh, give the opening statement? Ma'am? Uh, good morning, Mr. Senator. And um, of course, we are also glad for um, on behalf of the BSP to also um, uh, give some kind of a background on regarding the, the consolidation program. Actually, um, we have this uh, strengthening program for cooperative banks, or uh, SPCB for short, which was actually already approved by the Monetary Board way back in August 18 of 2011. And actually, it was revived um, um, about three times and extended uh, each time that uh, the program would uh, expire, but the latest extension, which was only until September 30 of 2016. So the objective of the program is really intended to encourage 
mergers, acquisitions, consolidations of cooperative banks to strengthen, of course, the cooperative sector of the, of the banking system. And uh, in fact, in this program, we also grant financial assistance, regulatory reliefs, and other incentives. So it's basically really uh, aimed at strengthening the, the cooperative in the banking sector, Mr. Senator. Okay. Um, the, uh, is there a failure on the smaller, do you see sort of like uh, inefficiency on the smaller cooperative? I'm asking this as policy questions because I'm sure many cooperative banks, not only from Bukidnon Republic, might come to me and say, why are we being merged into other smaller cooperative or bigger cooperative banks? Because they lose their identity. What happens really is they really lose their identity. And uh, um, is it uh, necessary? Is it a necessary procedure or, or program? Um, thank you, Mr. Senator. I'd like to clarify that the program is actually on a voluntary basis, meaning to say uh, BSP is not forcing cooperative banks to enter into this or, or to avail of the program. So it's a voluntary basis, meaning once uh, a cooperative bank decide to participate or avail of the, of the program, then it's really a voluntary part. Um, as to your question, Mr. Senator, about um, are small um, cooperative banks encountering uh, problems? Um, it's not just actually just on the cooperative banking sector. Normally, uh, for small banks, um, they of course um, encounter some some difficulties. So we're just uh, on the part of the BSP, we're providing providing them an option, of course, which is under the program to have uh, this kind of uh, difficulties be addressed. Through, uh, by entering into and availing of the program. So that's actually, and we'd like to emphasize that's a voluntary uh, part, Mr. Senator. So, thanks, ma'am. Well, how is the procedure? What is the procedure? For example, who, um, who initiates? Uh, do, the, do they initiate discussions amongst themselves? Does the bank or BSP initiate the discussions? What is the procedure, let's say, from step one? I, I'd like to just know the procedure before we can go into a more lengthy discussion. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Actually, um, since, uh, as I've mentioned, this is a voluntary uh, part on, on the part of the banks, so they, they would be the ones to really initiate the, the, their intention to avail of the program or to enter into this kind of program. So they would um, submit, of course, uh, through a letter, their intention, or it's a letter of intent that would be submitted not just to the BSC, but even as well to the, to the PDIC, since PDIC is also uh, one of the uh, uh, proponents of the program, actually um, in hand in hand with the PDIC and BSP, and even Land Bank as well, are, are um, the three agencies involved in this program. So it's really uh, out of the um, decision. It's, uh, and actually, I think uh, before they can really officially signify, they have to go through the process as well of uh, um, having a, calling a general assembly so that uh, it would also have the approval of the, of the membership. So there's uh, the, the legal process, but it's basically the banks themselves uh, would trigger uh, participation of this program and they would um, come, they can, they can come to the BSP to have, let's say they, they would seek some clarification or assistance. So BSP would just be there to guide them and if they have already decided to, to avail of the program. Let's uh, move to the cooperatives uh, sector through Chairman Ravenera. Chairman, paano ba ito? Paano lalapitan ka ba nila sa opsina mo? And they say that uh, uh, we are two or three cooperative banks that would like to merge. Is there a framework, a procedural framework in your office to uh, make this uh, happen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's our honor to be here. I'd like to, beforehand, uh, anything else, Mr. Chairman? Yes, it's correct. It may be recalled that the Cooperative Bank of Misamis Oriental, the, the Bukidon Cooperative Bank, and the Cooperative Bank of Agusan del Norte consolidated to form the Mindanao Co 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 Consolidated Cooperative Bank. Chairman, Chairman, yes. before we move yes. to that, uh, f procedural framework, Mona yes. Tayo, yes, on how it's done. It's actually yeah. Then we will move into the particular case yes, of this. Chairman, uh, under Rule 5 guidelines and governing the procedure for merger or consolidation 
as provided for in 9520, Mr. Chairman, is actually in all here. Uh, is it's to Chairman para sa discussion natin mamaya oh. to seek clarification on what So, what nandito po lahat, uh, all covered by this particular guideline, Mr. Chairman. For clarification, this is under Rule 5 of the Rule five. revised IRR, no? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Of the 9520 the law. Okay. So, just for the record, it shows here that, number one, you need the uh, duly approved board resolutions of each, each constituent cooperatives to enter into merger or consolidation. I'd just like to put this on record, bro. Yes, that's Tama, correct. correct yes, uh, Chairman? Yes. yes, Mr. Number Chairman. Number two, execution mm -hmm. of a memorandum of understanding to merge or consolidate. Yes, Stating that's correct. the creation of the joint committee to formulate the plan and proposal to merge or consolidate. What is this? Yes. Okay. Again, uh, again, number one, no? the original certificate of registration of both constituent cooperatives. Number two, resolution of the board of directors of both constituent cons cooperatives approving the proposal to consolidate duly certified by the respective secretaries attested to by the chairpersons of the consolidating cooperatives. Tama? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Number three, general or representative assembly resolutions of both constituent cooperatives approving the proposed plan of consolidation duly certified by the respective secretaries and attested to by the chairpersons of the consolidating cooperatives. Tama? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. The fourth, the excerpts of the minutes of the General and Representative Assembly meetings of the Consolidating Cooperatives with their respective attendance sheets duly certified by the Secretary and Chairperson of the preside or Presiding Officer. Tama? That's correct. Okay. Certi the fifth, certification of Secretaries duly attested to by the Chairpersons of the Constituent Cooperatives that there was a quorum in the General or Representative Assembly meetings conducted and required and the required number of votes for the approval was met. Tama po? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. On the sixth uh, requirement, the approved plan of consolidation and its all attachments as required under Section 4 of this rule. Tama? That's correct. The seventh is the economic survey. The eighth uh, requirement is the proposed articles of cooperation and bylaws of the consolidated Cooperative. Tama po yun, yes, Chairman? that's correct, Mr. Chairman. The ninth is surety bond of accountable officers. Yes. The tenth is the proof of publication posting of the announcement of consolidation. Correct? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. The eleventh is proof of notice to creditors. Tama po yun, Chairman? Yes, yes, that's correct. The twelfth requirement is written agreement to settle obligations. Yes. Tama po yun. And uh, the thirteenth requirement is undertaking to change name in the event that another cooperative has acquired prior rights to the use of the proposed name. Correct. Correct. And finally, in my list, it says um, registration fee in accordance with the schedule of fees prescribed by the authority. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So once this all <laughs> requirements, no? <laughs> Only in the Philippines. More part in the Philippines, talaga. <laughs> Kaya yeah, sa isang committee ko yung Ease of Doing Business Act, eh, malapit ko na matatapos yun para we can quickly um, uh, fast track all these requirements. But uh, dito po sa requirements na ito is only on the level of CDA. Yes. Cooperative. That's uh, correct. Na approve na ito, yeah. go na siya. Yes. Pwede na sila pumunta sa BSB at PDIC. Tama? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, along this line, there's always this requirement, a certificate of authority granted by the Banco Central of the Philippines. Ah, so, mauna ang certificate of authority? Th th that's also a uh, necessary requirement, it's Mr. A, Chairman. Uh, wala dito sa listahan ko. Ah. So, BSB... To the proponent banks. To the proponent, <coughs> not, not to CDA, Mr. Chairman. To the proponent banks. But it's a requirement by it's the CDA? Yeah, yeah. In a way, yes, it is. Uh -huh. Because the proponent bank applied for consolidation under the strengthening program for cooperative banks, Mr. Chairman. So, um, conf please confirm, Ma'am Chuchi, tama yan? And yes. this whole process, while it's being yes, done, Mr. pupunta Chairman. muna sila sa, yes, sa inyo. Yes, it's necessary that uh, the BSP will issue the certificate of authority to register. To register. That's a precondition for the approval of the merger, right? Yes. It's a precondition. Oh, okay. 
So, para maklaro, para I'm clarified. Yeah. That's the reason why we're holding this meeting. It's not to pick on uh, anyone, but uh, really just let's do this uh, uh, so that we can see the policies by all three agencies. So, okay. Now, where does uh, the PDIC come in? And that's where like, I'd like to go with the flow, BSP, CDA, and PDIC. Um, where do you come in in the whole procedure, ma'am? Uh, okay. Are you also pre-requirements to uh, the BSP approval of the merger? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Mr. Senator. Um, if you look at uh, the charter of PDIC, and I'm quoting section 26 of the PDIC charter, um, it reads, without prior written consent by the corporation, referring to PDIC, no insured bank shall merge or consolidate with any bank or institution or assume liability to pay any deposits made in or similar liabilities of any bank or institution or transfer assets to any bank or institution in consideration of the assumption of liabilities for any portion of the deposits made in such insured bank. To implement this uh, particular provision, and of course knowing that there is also the requirement for uh, BSP approval, prior approval to any merger consolidation or acquisition of uh, any banks, um, PDIC and BSP entered into a memorandum of agreement where PDIC and BSP came up with um, some kind of an arrangement as to how exactly uh, what exactly will be the framework if there is um, an application for a merger consolidation or acquisition. Um, in addition to that memorandum of agreement, since this is only between PDIC and uh, the BSP, PDIC also issued a bulletin, and this is bulletin number 2009-35, where we indicated, of course, the fact of the execution of the memorandum of agreement between PDIC and the BSP, um, which provided for a working arrangement to standardize documentary requirements and share information relevant to evaluation of viability of banks. So primarily the objective is to harmonize the requirements of both the PDIC and BSP in cases of applications for merger consolidation and acquisition. Now part of what also we indicated in our bulletin is that the approval of the proposed merger consolidation by PDIC is uh, valid for a period of six months reckoned from the date of, uh, reckoned from the date the applicants shall have fully obtained both PDIC and BSP's approvals. So um, in terms of the documentary requirements, um, these documentary requirements, as I was saying earlier, have been um, harmonized uh, pursuant to the requirements of BSP memorandum and the PDIC bulletin, as I have mentioned earlier. And we have a list here, which basically includes um, the legal documents, which uh, include the articles of merger consolidation, the plan of merger consolidation, as well as the financial statements that will allow us uh, to project the viability of the um, transaction, the, the proposed transaction, um, as well as, of course, the consent, the authority from the board and the consent from the stockholders, among others. So um, the framework, at least as far as uh, PDIC and the BSP are concerned, um, is in place and has been, um, and the public has been duly notified of uh, these requirements. Can the committee have a copy of that, uh, the requirements, uh, attorney? Uh, sure. May, may we ask the committee to, to with his uh, staff, to uh, get a copy or make a copy for this committee and present, give it to me as well today, uh, now? So I just want to state attorney. for the record that the documentary requirements I'm providing uh, the good senator uh, is a summary of the documents required under BSP Memorandum Number M-2009-028, Series of 2009, and PDIC Bulletin Number 2009-35, Series of 2009. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So it's clear, though, there is a process involved. It's very clear. Uh, from the side of the BSP, which is our main uh, uh, regulator on, on, on behalf of the banking sector, and um, with the CDA as the regulator as well for the uh, cooperative uh, sector, and PDIC, of course, who's in charge. You know, if anything goes wrong, Everybody, exactly, for the poster protection, everybody looks up to the PDIC to help them out. And, and so they're, they're a key player in this uh, um, process. So now we'll go to uh, more specific concerns, because this, this is an offshoot now of uh, the complaint that I received in my office, and that's the reason why we're having this hearing, is so that we can look at the uh, processes, the legal processes, uh, where there may be possible loopholes where there may be possible uh, problems along the way. Because uh, I believe this uh, program is, is it a new program? Is it, is, is it fresh? Is it a fresh, uh, is it a new program? Is it an old program, uh, Ma'am Chuchi? Is this being promoted in previous administrations or just very Thank recently? Mr. Chairman, the program dates back to 2011, Papo. Okay, so yeah, it's been it's a, a six-year-old year program yes. and like any six-year-old program or like even any law, even our law, our Republic Act 9520 with German Rabanera and our friends from the CDA, we're still having problems implementing the law. So like any program, there are hiccups along the way. And so I, I've um, encountered some of these hiccups and we'll see how we can uh, re reconcile or resolve this. Although for the record, I believe um, uh, I was told by my staff that uh, cases have been filed already in court. So I don't want to subjudice this uh, uh, whole um, proceedings, but what we can do is uh, do just fact-finding and uh, discuss the facts only without having to come up with, with any resolution or decision so that we don't, uh, um, yeah, we don't prejudice the cases in the courts that are necessary or the, the particular courts or the court cases. So uh, it all started, and I think I have a brief background here uh, yeah on what had happened on what transpired it's in my it's in my speech actually okay um, we hold this meeting to review and assess the status of cooperative banks and uh, the reason why basically what came to my attention Bukid non cooperative bank in this particular case the cooperative bank of Agusan uh, Norte and the uh, cooperative bank of Misamis Oriental um, had uh, initially planned to merge uh, their three operations or the three banking groups, and that was uh, that came to my attention on July 3. Uh, my office received a letter from Bukidnon Cooperative Bank seeking help of the Senate Committee on Cooperatives in an agreement that they've entered into. As I mentioned earlier, BCB or Bukidnon Cooperative Bank reportedly or purportedly agreed to consolidate with COBAM and uh, CBMO. Um, into what is known as the Mindanao Consolidated Cooperative Bank, with the Cooperative Bank of Misamis Oriental taking the lead in this union. Kasama natin si former Congressman. I, re I remember Congressman Liko. We were together in 95 when we crafted 9520. So late. Uh, so we should. Uh, we'd like to hear comments. Uh, I'd like to start off probably with the uh, complaining party. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it on record, and of course we will hear everyone's side. No, um, we'll start off with Bukidnon Cooperative Bank, uh, who from Bukidnon. Kaya na po, uh, uh, Sir Calixto, uh, Dakidaw, uh, you are now recognized. Dakidaw po. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Senator. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. I am Calixto Dakidaw, a director of the Bukidnon Cooperative Bank. Uh, Bukidnon Cooperative Bank has asset of uh, about more, uh, more than 500 million pesos. It operates in the whole province of Bukidnon. And on behalf of the Bukidnon Cooperative Bank and its mem uh, cooperative members, uh, I would like to first of all thank the Senate Committee, the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines, particularly in the uh, Honorable Senator Subiri, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Cooperatives, for this opportunity to present the situation of the Bukidnon Cooperative Bank. 
uh, BCB's case is a story of a failed effort of consolidation. Back in 2012, BCB entered into an agreement with two other cooperative banks, uh, the, uh, to consolidate their operations. The two other cooperative banks are the Cooperative Bank of Agusan del Norte and the Cooperative Bank of Misamis Oriental. And the consolidated banks will be known as the Mindanao Consolidated Cooperative Bank or MCCB. At the time, the parties agreed to consolidate their respective uh, outstanding capital were as follows. Uh, CBMO, 93 million. BCB, 33 million. And Coban, 12 million. Having the highest prospective capital contribution among the three banks, CBMO was designated as the lead bank in the consolidation process. While CBMO will take the lead rule, the parties understood that given their contribution to the proposed consolidated entity, they shall be given their fair uh, share of corporate powers and that the whole process will be done following the principle of transparency, trust, faithful compliance, and cooperation. To effect the consolidation, we elected 11 members of the interim board of directors, seven from CBMO and four from BCB, with no representative from Coban. We also created a technical working group with seven members consisting of three chairmen, three general managers or president of the three constituent banks and a consultant. The TWG task was tasked to formulate and produce all the necessary documents required for consolidation, such as but not limited to the following. Letter A, Article of Cooperation. Letter B, Constitution and Bylaws. And C, Plan of Consolidation. The effort to consolidate did not go on as planned. CBMO itself produced and submitted the documents to the Cooperative Development Authority. In addition, no plan of consolidation was formulated. The technical working group was not consulted on the issues concerning the organizational structure of MCCB. When PCB complained by writing to CDE to hold in abeyance the registration of MCCB, CBMO's chairman, Mr. Edgardo Gamolo, met this BCB director and assured them that the issues and concern raised by BCB will be addressed. BCB believed in the practices of Mr. Gamolo and BCB withdraw its letter to the CDE. Eventually, MCCB was registered with the CDE. On 18 July, uh, can we go back a bit? When was this that was uh, that you had complained? Uh, what date? I can't exactly did, uh, remember the date, but maybe that is January 2016. January 22. January 2016. When we uh, requested it to hold in abeyance. Okay. Okay. So on July 18, 2016 the members of the Board of Directors of MCCB held a meeting where they elected the chairman, the vice chairman, and appointed the president, the treasurer, and corporate secretary, all of whom are personnel of CBMO. None of the two other constituent, constituent banks were elected to any relevant position. In their next meeting, that is August 2016. The president of MCCB presented an organizational structure of MCCB where the two vice presidents, all the department heads, and all the division heads were kept 
CBMO. BCB objected the proposed designation, but its objection was denied. BCB realized that the promises made by CBMO were false. Instead of a consolidation, wherein BCB will have a voice in the consolidated entity, CB, CBMO wanted to lord it over BCB as if it had purchased BCB. Your Honor, BCB no longer wants to proceed with the consolidation. It wrote later to CDE, uh, the BSP and the PDIC, that was September 2016, to confirm its withdrawal from the proposed consolidation. We are in the Senate today to seek its help. BCB wants to preserve itself by withdrawing from the proposed consolidation. We believe that the withdrawal will be the only way with which BCB can protect and promote the interest of our stakeholders. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Sir Calixto. And that's the reason why I'm a businessman myself, and I do a lot of businesses with other partners. That's the reason why when they went to me, I said, you should have had from the very beginning what we call a shareholders agreement before you move forward into signing any documents wherein you merge, you sell, or you transact the business. The shareholders agreement very clearly states that for one group to get how many share, I mean, how many board seats, uh, how many of you or which uh, officers will go to one group, which officers will go to the other. Yan ang napakahalaga. Dapat i-training mo sila, Chairman, yung mga ganon. Dapat pagsabihan nyo, mag-shareholders agreement muna bago mag, uh, magkapirmahan ng merger. Maybe that's a suggestion that I make to the Chairman for other transactions involving this, that they should have an assigned, notarized agreement by all parties on what their uh, responsibilities are uh, and what they're uh, going to be given. At the, end, at the end of the day. Diyan nagkakagulo palagi lahat ng business transaction. Sabi, mag-partner tayo. O, sige, partner tayo. <laughs> Inaisahan ng partner yung isa. Naging super majority na nagkagulo na, nagkaletsi-letsi. Pumupunta na sa korte to lahat, which eventually is what happened now. So that's why... Um, now, let's also listen to the side of uh, uh, Misami Sorrental uh, Cooperative Bank on uh, what uh, had transpired. So, um, Chairman Gamulo, you are now recognized. How are you related to Joe Gamulo uh, of uh, Bukidnon, Valencia? Actually, Joe, Bukid, uh, Joe Gamulo uh, is from Hassan. And uh, then, uh, he migrated. Kamag-anak, kamag-anak uh, ninyo. Uh, we cannot raise our relationship, but uh, we were, we are close uh, family. Oh. Kung sa ato ba, gaw. Gaw ang gaw. pinawaga. Gaw, <laughs> igagaw. Uh, <laughs> Oh, sige. Oh, how, how, how can you explain this, uh, Chairman, on what has uh, transpired with Bukidnon Cooperative Bank? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Senator, and good morning to everyone. Now, uh, one, uh, we have undergone all the processes. We have complied with all the processes of consolidation at the General Assembly. In fact, we have uh, conducted two sets of General Assemblies. First, uh, uh, of course, the plan uh, to consolidate the, that will be one that would be approved by the General Assembly of the Constituent Banks. We did that, and one of the key points that was agreed was the name of the bank. And fortunately, uh, the first name was MBA. Uh, MB stands for Misamis Oriental, Bukid Non Anagosan del Norte, Consolidated, Consolidated Co Bank. And fortunately, uh, the system of CDA would not allow acronyms. So we went back to Kwan, we went back to another Kwan, uh, uh, Skorban. We went back to our respective General Assemblies. This is the main reason why there was that delay of the registration. 
So we went back to our respective assemblies to seek the approval of the new name. So the General Assembly uh, proposed the present name, the Mindanao Consolidated uh, Coop Bank. So we forwarded the name to uh, Cooperative Development Authority, so it's okay. Now, all the processes mentioned by uh, Chairman Rabanera and uh, Madam Chuchi Ponasher uh, were complied by the constituent uh, banks. Now, I would like to comment... For clarification, <laughs> lang, Sir Edgar, ano lang natin, uh, tatanong na ako while you're also uh, commenting, if you don't mind. So, yung mga binanggit ko kanina na mga guidelines, mga requirements for consolidation, yung 14 requirements na binanggit yes, ko kanina, yes. complied yun? Yes, yes, yes. By all sides, by all group, by the Yes, of course, that was agreed because there was that transition board and it was agreed and any agreement was brought to the General Assembly for for approval. Okay. So, okay, so we cannot, uh, we could not proceed to the application for registration without the imprimatur of our respective General Assemblies. Now, uh, those were specifics uh, mentioned by my girlfriend, Calexto. Now, one, I would like to comment on the number of directors. That is part of the agreement. We do have an articles of agreement, and the Bukinon Group, Agusan del Norte Group, knew the agreements. And one of the basic contents of the agreement was the sharing of uh, the number of seats of the board of directors. So there was no question uh, because we based the 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 number on the assets of the constituent banks. Can I have a copy? Can we have a? Can the committee get a copy of that articles of agreement? Yeah. Uh, Do you have that naka, copy? Naka dalaka. But we will, Kwan, we will uh, forward provide, to you, provide. we will forward to you the notarized and the uh, notarized uh, agreement, articles of agreement. Now, regarding the number of seats, uh, the board of directors, so there was no problem with regards to uh, seats, uh, seven uh, for Misamis Rental. Actually, itong apat, this is not intended for Bukid Nun. Only this is intended for the two other constituent banks, Bukidnon and Agusan del Norte. But uh, at the onset, I ask the Agusan del Norte group to give up that one seat because technically, wala silang representation. Kasi negative ang ano nila, eh. negative ang capital. So I ask them that we give. That set intended for Agusan del Norte to Bukidnon. That is why ang sa Bukidnon naging apat. But according to the agreement, that four seats is intend, intended for Bukidnon and Agusan del Norte. Now, the plan of consolidation, there was that plan of consolidation. In fact, the Bukidnon group signed that one. Otherwise, uh, CDA and, uh, CDA and uh, BSP would not uh, consider our application for consolidation without that plan of consolidation. There was that plan. We will also forward to you the couple of the notarized uh, plan of consolidation. Uh, Matit, uh, please uh, take Actually, note. Actually, I have it here. Okay, well. okay, that's it. Then, uh, regarding the organiza organizational structure, it's an ongoing, pro uh, ongoing process. That is one area that uh, we have tasked to the technical working group. The technical working group was tasked to uh, do some uh, uh, proposal because that time, young transition board could not act officially because transition pa. So we organized the technical working group so that when we could have, uh, when we would have uh, the, 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 the regular directors, so that those proposals of the technical working group uh, would be forwarded to the regular directors. So technically and officially, walang more on a proposal by the technical working group. Uh, the board 
transition board kasi wala pa na-register, na-register could not act on the uh, proposals of the technical working group. So I asked uh, the group that we will, we would forward uh, these uh, proposals of the technical working group when the regular uh, members of the board are elected and duly constituted. So with that, okay, the regarding the letter of Bukinon Group in holding the abeyance. Uh, Before we move there, Sir Ed, uh, what uh, the, the group of uh, Sir Calixto, Sir Bukinon uh, Cooperative Bank, were requesting for a um, plan, a consolidation plan. There was that plan. So what is that uh, consolidation plan? For clarification, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Bukinon Cooperative Bank, what is consolidation, uh, consolidation plan that you have to sir? Uh, the, consolidation, the consolidation plan we are referring to, Honorable Senator, is the plan wherein uh, sa document wherein the, the group have to follow Kasi palagi kong iniulit nung nag-discuss kami when si Met, paano natin i-resolve ang issue kung sa isang posisyon may taga CBMO, may taga Kuban, ay may taga BCB na qualified. And that is why in the consolidation plan that we are referring to requires that in every position must cover the minimum qualification before we will start hiring for employee. Uh, at yun ang palagi namin yun ulit na supposedly all those things should be clarified in the plan of consolidation because this controversy are all attributable to the absence of plan of, con the plan of consolidation. Kasi kung mayroon na sana yun, wala, wala, walang, walang problema. Kasi sa plan of consolidation pala, makikita na how to fill in this and how to integrate how our asset. Uh, maybe na, na ano tayo doon sa plan, bakit plan in the minds and plan in the process. Ang, ang hinihingi namin, nung nagkaya kami sumulat ng hold, holding in abeyance, kasi wala kami nakikita ang klarong direction kung mag-consolidate tayo. Very blurred. Uh, for the rec on the record lang, no, without um, uh, taking any sides, there is an agreement of articles of consolidation. Ito yung sinasabi kong shareholders agreement. Meron pala eh. The problem is nakapirma ka nandito, Sir Calixto. Your signature is here, very clear. It was signed uh, uh, on September 25 of 2012, wherein uh, the board was already actually chosen. Uh, interim board, 12 of you. Um, 11. Oh, 11 of 11, you, sorry, uh, rather. 11 of you. So, ito yung, ito yung problema dun. So, Ang sinasabi na ni Sir Ed, Ed na gamolo ng Misamis Oriental Cooperative Bank is that the plan, the consolidation plan or the nitty-gritty, is that we're saying the nitty-gritty on the employment, on the hiring and all that will be done already by the new board. Yes. By the elected yes. board because yes. then they can make the policy already. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. So, yan ang, yan ang, I think, dyan kayo nagkaka... Uh, that's where the difference is. So, dyan ka nagkaka problema. So, uh, we'll continue. Uh, yes, uh, and then I'll I, I would like, uh, I would like to pick up that uh, point. Ang problema dyan kasi uh, the application for registration was approved by the Cooperative Development Authority on April 27, uh, 2016. And then that is the primary requirement of the monetary board to issue the authority to operate to the consolidated bank. And then uh, finally, the authority to operate was issued by the monetary board a few months later. Uh, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, December 15, uh, the same year, 2016. So that's it. I would like to go back to the letter of Bukidnon regarding the holding of abeyance, ito ang problema dito. Kasi we were, wala pa ito maristo, maristo, Senator. And in February, sometime in February, we had our last meeting of the transition board. 
Okay, I asked the transition board, all of the representatives of BCB Bukidnon were present. So I asked them, wala na ba tayong problema? Kasi kung wala na problema, we will submit our application, yung pangalawang araw na, kasi may bagong pangalan na, bagong pangalan na. We will submit to the CDA the renewal. Uh, reconstituted articles uh, application for registration together with the articles of cooperation and the uh, bylaws. So, nandyan ang board, sa so wala kang problema. And then, to find out, the following day, the president of Coop Bank Misamis Oriental that time called me up, Ed, there is a letter from CDA requesting us to comment on the letter of the Bukidnon Group to hold in abeyance but day, uh, day before, eh, I asked them, hindi namin, hindi kami sinabihan, meron parang silang sulat. But that, that, that is a plain stabbing at our back. So, following week, I went to the Ikuan. I went to Balay Balay to uh, have an audience with them. So, including yung, ano, including yung mga brass managers nila nandyan. Wala naman akong gipramis dyan. Ang gipramis ko, we will obey, we will uh, comply with the agreements. And yung ano ko sa mga branch managers, don't worry, walang matanggal sa inyo. Lahat ay kwan. Lahat ay uh, will kwan. Will continue to work. So that uh, that was the only promise. Nga klaro, nga, uh, oh, So nobody will be demoted, displaced, and in fact, your salary will be uh, would be up upgraded because the salaries of uh, Misamis Oriental Group is a little bit higher than the employees of uh, Bukid non Bank. So I did not promise anything. Yun lang talaga. So I asked them, if you would like to continue with our consolidation, then you have to write CDA. But if you will not continue our consolidation, tell us so that we can act accordingly with our group of Misamis Oriental. So that's it. And then, uh, regarding the appointment, so, ang nangyari dito, we are required by law to hold the first regular general assembly to elect the regular officers of the bank. So, we did that. So, yung group po ng bukid nung nag-elect ng apat, Yung kami sa group of applications, so natuloy, nagkaroon kayo ng assembly, nagkaroon din kayo ng assembly. Yes, oh, to record. Oh. So tinuloy niyo pa rin yung assembly. Oh. So, parang gusto na ninyo. Oh. So, <laughs> so let me continue, Senator. Oh. So, no, no, no. so the regular board of directors were elected. And in July, we invited uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Orlando Banera, the chair of uh, CDA, as our inducting officer. Complete lahat yung Bukid Noon Group, nandiyan kami. And then, uh, uh, I, if I remember right, that was also the time that Bukid Noon Group presented an idea that the operation of Bukid Noon Coop Bank would continue. Parang mayroong transition for three, three years and we did not agree on that because that is not uh, that is not uh, <laughs> parang hindi yun pwede. Kasi yung gusto nila, Bukid Noon Group would still operate independently uh, even if there was already that uh, uh, that uh, organized MCCB. So I think that is one issue nga parang hindi nila masabi sa amin sa atin. Uh, yung uh, ayaw namin because that is not, uh, that is uh, parang hindi yun pwede. Uh, six months na lang girequan sa BSP. So yun and then what, what else? Regarding the appointment of officers. Now the next board meeting nandyan pa sila kumplito. In August. So one of the acts of the board is of course to appoint the president because the president uh, takes charge of the operations. And I instructed the pres president to uh, uh, propose to submit a plan, a transitional plan for, uh, for the next uh, meeting. 
So there was no the, the four uh, representatives uh, from Bukit Non were present during our second board meeting, and there was there no was question. Was there an objection from there? There was no objection. We can also forward to you the, the minutes, of, minutes meeting. of meeting. There was no objection from uh, the group, and during that meeting also, uh, we elected the chairman and the vice chairman according to the process. I don't know what kind of process they, were, they, are, they, are, they are talking about. The process is that secret balloting. Everyone is considered as candidate for the position of the chairman and next vice chairman. Nanjan Rensano, sa record natin. The election of the board of directors uh, was according to the procedures laid down by CDA, by the law of the CDA. Kaya election kayo secret balloting? Nagpilihan kayo yung secret balloting. So it happened. Secret balloting. So I got 11 votes. That means that thank you very much for voting me. Yung ato. Including yung pito. No, no. Actually, it's 10 because I did not vote for myself. It's only 10. And the next round is the election of the chairman. Vice chairman. Attorney Lico got six votes, seven, seven. Uh, seven votes, and then of course Mr. Uh, Pakanan got four. four. So there was that process, and then we came to the appointment of different members of the committees. All of the committees, dalawa that is understandable, naman. Dalawa from Samis Oriental, may isa sa Bukid nun. Lahat ng committees nanjan ang but unfortunately, the next board meeting, hindi asa September, hindi na sila nagapir until this time. So we could have discussed further these problems had we attended the subsequent meetings. Hindi na sila nagwan, so we put the board meetings namin. And we are now in the process because uh, Mr. Dacado and Mr. Pakanan, mirun pa actually silang isang taon pa. So we are now in the process of uh, disqualifying them. Uh, so, in short, Mr. Uh, what is the reason for disqualifying them? Not uh, a support meeting that is uh, precisely provided for banking uh, law. Still, uh, more than 50% disqualified. Uh, Chairman, what is your comment on? Um, uh, hindi mo pa binabangit anong ginawa niyong resolution on this issue kasi I stopped you short and I asked for the processes. I think you were about to to read a statement on how you tried to resolve this issue. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we have actually resolved these issues. When letters were sent to us, we promptly answered all of these letters. And in fact, uh, based on the procedures that we have mentioned earlier, Mr. Chairman, and the requirements under RA 9520, and it's implementing rules and regulations. The, these were all satisfactorily complied with by the three uh, banks. And upon a finding that a certificate of authority was granted by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, to the proponent banks, the CDA issued the certificate of registration and certificate of consolidation in favor of MCCB. In issuing said certification, Mr. Chairman, the CDA believed that just like all other applications for registration of merger or consolidate, consolidation of corporate banks, MCCB's registration was in accordance with the provisions of RA 9520 and its implementing rules and regulation, Mr. Chairman. And all of those that we have asked them, that's correct, Mr. Chairman, when they were asking us, because we have here a chronology of events, yes, in fact, I... Uh, can attest to that. There was a time that we, uh, to be specific on the date, Mr. Chairman, it was uh, January 22, 2016, when the Board of Directors and Management of the Bukidon Copti Bank humbly requested CDA to hold in abeyance the registration of the proposed Mindanao Consolidated Copti Bank for the reason that there are some important issues and concern that need to be resolved by the constituent banks. On the date uh, t January 26, Mr. Chairman, uh, 2016, the authority requested 
the interim board of directors of the proposed MCCB to comment the letter of Bukidnon Cooperative Bank regarding the request to hold in abeyance. And then, Mr. Chairman, February 11, 2016, the board of directors and of Bukidnon Cooperative Bank informed CDA that it has a meeting with the interim board of directors of the MCCB last February 9, 2016, and has already resolved the issues and concerns that's the withdrawal of the request to hold in abeyance the registration of MCCB. And so, Mr. Chairman, February 15, 2016, the proposed MCCB resubmitted the registration document to CDA, Registration Division. March 1, 2016, uh, there was this information to correct some, com uh, some deficiencies, and this was corrected. And so, Mr. Chairman, CDA Registration Division received and processed the corrected documents of the proposed MCCB. That April 27, 2016, Mr. Chairman, the proposed MCCB was registered with our office. So after complying with all of these procedures, requirements as provided for by, the, by Rule 5 that we, you earlier mentioned, Mr. Chairman, and we have all the supporting documents brought by our lawyers, Mr. Chairman. If there are some questions, all of these are available to be submitted. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. But uh, before we ask uh, our other resource persons to comment, um, there is a, um, a when they went to visit me, the BCB, they had mentioned that uh, PDIC had not agreed to the had not given final agreement to the merger. Is that correct? Because uh, I think you need the approval from both three agencies. In this particular merger, uh, has the PDIC already agreed, um, had come up with a favorable uh, response? What is the position of PDIC on this merger? Um, Your Honor, um, well, on record... Um oh, one second. I'd like to recognize my good friend, fellow seatmate, uh, Joel uh, Villanueva for joining us, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, Senator, for joining us. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, as always, I'm uh, here for you. <laughs> and uh, you, of course, uh, supporting your advocacy, especially in this uh, very uh, active committee, considering that we're on break and you're still on fire conducting <laughs> hearings. And Thank you very uh, much. Morning. Good afternoon. Morning to everyone. I know, I know Senator Joel is uh, very busy as well today. Uh, he just, I'm sure he just uh, finished, did they finish the briefing? A uh, security okay. briefing on, uh, on the Mindanao uh, martial law yeah, extension. So thank you, uh, Senator Joel, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, ma'am, uh, attorney. On record, uh, PDIC gave its consent to the proposed consolidation of the three banks, uh, Misamis, Bukidnon, and Agus. Oh, sorry, I didn't get that. You guys gave the consent. Consent uh, okay. to the proposed consolidation, which at the time was intending to form MBA Consolidated Cooperative Bank. So this uh, consent was given uh, December 2000. December of? December 2013, and okay. uh, when we gave this consent, um, it was specifically uh, for a period, as we have indicated in our letter, for a period only of six months reckoned from the date the proponent banks shall have fully obtained both PDICs and BSPs approval. After which, if it's not implemented, then the proponent banks shall secure the PDIC's consent anew. Um, what is uh, peculiar about this particular consolidation, Mr. Senator, is that this is a consolidation under the program, as uh, earlier uh, described by uh, Ms. Chuchi Funasher of uh, BSP. And um, under the program, PDIC uh, may grant financial assistance uh, to the propo proponent uh, or the proposed consolidated bank of about uh, $192.7 And this primarily is to address the capital deficiency um, resulting from the, the problem of uh, Agusan. Mm -hmm. 
uh, capital deficiency uh, to address the problem of one of the constituent banks. So uh, that is what's on record, Your Honor. Um, however, hearing from uh, both parties and considering that um, the issue between the two parties is now pending with the court, uh, we request your honor that we do not dwell on the issue of this consent because that issue aside, uh, it appears that um, there are. Yes, I agree. I agree, attorney. No, I'm not a lawyer, but um, no offense to the lawyers, but um, <laughs> with the non lawyers in the Senate, we agree much faster. <laughs> on particular issues <laughs> and bills. But uh, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, you know, as, as uh, uh, members of the bar, of course, you're careful with uh, the subjudicial rule, sub rule. So I will ask hypothetical questions, not this particular issue, but hypothetical questions. Like, uh, there's now a problem of divorce. Uh, one group would like to divorce with the other. And I know divorce is not allowed in the Philippines. <laughs> That's exactly what I told them when I met with them. Well, gusto niyo mag-divorce para wala pa tayong divorce in Pilipinas. So, um, what are the red flags? I I'll ask this to the Central Bank. No, what are the red flags? Uh, because what will happen now? Uh, for example, hypothetically, you approve a merger. Uh, hypothetically, uh, all the documentation is above board. And then one group decides to opt out. Because that will be a problem if, if they don't want to cooperate. Is that uh, if they don't, if one particular group which handles a particular province will not want to cooperate, what will happen? You know, a uh, number, number of things could happen there. Um, what would be the stand of the BSP on this? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, we'd like to clarify that actually the Monetary Board has already uh, approved the consolidation of the three proponent banks. So, with that approval, uh, individually, each of the three proponent banks would cease to exist already, given that there's now a new bank uh, coming from the, the, the three banks. So um, given that there's a new bank, so understandably... Hypothetically, this new bank is what is being recognized by the BSP. Yes, yes Mr. Chair. So that, that's what we'd like to clarify. But as to uh, legal process or... Um, legal uh, options that the the propo i mean the parties can can avail of uh, i'd like to of course uh, seek the my the assistance of attorney ragaggio our deputy general counsel yeah. good morning mr chair uh, there are options available to the uh, parties involved the co the booking cooperative bank for example under the co Code, they can they have this right of withdrawal if they want to, and then there are these uh, involuntary and voluntary dissolution. So there are legal remedies available to them. But, um, uh, just hypothetically, without naming Bukid Nunes Cooperative Bank, <laughs> <laughs> so um, hypothetically, this uh, bank that wants to opt out at this stage and point in time. Is that still allowed? Will it still be? Because uh, they merged, na, you know? Yes. And as far as as far as the BSP is concerned, and all the other regulatory agencies, they are already one bank. It's yes, one bank. Yes, all assets yes. merged. Yes. At this point in time, dissolution is still uh, possible. A divorce is still possible. They can withdraw. There is a provision under the CDA uh, under the Cooperative Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Chairman, uh, could you clarify? I, I'd like to clearly state this, Mr. Chairman. When they consolidated, they already have lost their juridical personality as cooperative bank or booking or Mr. Rental or of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, those that can withdraw are only the members because they already have lost their legal personality. So, in effect, uh, what I recognize then would be the individual members, the primary cooperatives then. If that is, if they want to withdraw, not but not anymore that bank, Mr. Chairman, it, that's not anymore proper, because they already have lost their legal personality. When does, they that, does that mean uh, the new bank now takes over all assets? Yes, in effect. Yes. They will take over all assets. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, oh. that's correct. Uh, 
Uh, that's, a, that's a good question by my uh, yeah. legis staff. If they opt out of uh, this merger, will they still have the authority to operate as Bukidnon Cooperative Bank or it ceases to exist? That bank, Mr. Or that, Chair. That, that bank, whatever bank, you know, whatever bank it is. Could be the bank of the moon, you know. Unfortunately, <laughs> not anymore, Mr. Chair. In that hypothetical, hypothetical situation that you've mentioned, once there is a cessation of juridical personalities and there is now this consolidated bank, the juridical personalities will cease. Now, as Mr. Chairman uh, of the CDA here mentioned, they can withdraw, but as members of the corporate of the bank, not as, uh, as that bank. Okay, uh, we'd like to, uh, con uh, former Congressman Attorney Nico, please. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, good morning. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the cooperative code allows withdrawal, but not the entire Bukidnon Cooperative Bank, considering that there was already an approval of the, of the consolidation. And in fact, BCB has advised to return their authority to operate, but the you know, they do not uh, return it. Anyway, if the members of BCP ought to withdraw, they can withdraw. If everybody will withdraw, they can withdraw. MPP will, but not, not the entire bank. Because we all know that many of the members of the BCB or Bukidnon Cooperative Banks are willing to to be with the MCCB. No, no, no. I, 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 I doubt that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a unanimous decision of the uh, because many, many came to our office and uh, they are willing to, to remain with MCCB. Uh, going back to hypothetical questions, on the, on the bank that uh, wants to opt out of this uh, merger, uh, of course, they have assets. The assets are owned by the member cooperators. But so how is that? The assets rem will remain with the, the the premises, the money, everything, the savings. Paano uh, okay. Chairman. Mr. Ch uh, Chairman, it's very clear here uh, under Article 22 of Rule 5. It says here, the surviving or the consolidated cooperative shall possess all the assets, rights, privileges, immunities, and franchises of each of the constituent cooperatives. So therefore, Mr. Chairman, in effect, the former, the, the, those uh, banks that have merged, they lost their legal, juridical personality, and the assets is now owned by the constituent banks. Uh, and if ever uh, those who are allowed to withdraw, how can they withdraw? They lo lost their legal personality already. But those who, who are members, the individual members, primary cooperatives, may, they still are members. Uh. Ownership, yes, attorney. I'll, I'll go to the side of the hypothetical bank that we're talking about. No? <laughs> but um, um, the assets, kasi, you know, when you have banks, assets in banks, that, that's properties, that's, uh, that's owned by individual members, but members of the cooperative bank. Or is this assets owned by the bank? Owned by the new bank. The new constituent bank, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That's correct. So again, let's uh, recognize the side of the hypothetical bank. Uh, Good morning, uh, Honorable uh, Yes, uh, Tony Francis Rivera. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Uh, I'll just uh, react to the statement coming from the representative of PDIC. We have here a letter, Honorable Senator, dated 20 March 2017, coming from PDIC and signed by its Executive Vice President, uh, Ms. Villegas. It states here on the second page, and I quote, you were likewise advised that during our meeting, together with representatives of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas on uh, 6 February 2017, that the consolidation of MCCV and its registration with the Cooperative Development Authority was without PDIC's consent. Close quote. So, Your, uh, Your Honor, uh, Honorable Senator, there is here an official statement coming from PDIC, which uh, is to the effect that the uh, consolidation was without its consent. And uh, we hear statements coming from uh, the BSP and uh, from uh, 
supposed MCCB that the juridical personality of a BCB uh, had already uh, been terminated and it ceased to exist as, a, as, a, as an entity. And they're citing, uh, for that purpose, the Cooperative Code of the Philippines. Well, we recognize that there is that provision. But, uh, Your Honor, uh, that's not the only provision of law that's applicable. The PDIC Charter contains a provision which prohibits the consolidation of banks without PDIC's consent. And uh, we submit that that provision is mandatory such that non-compliance with that provision would make the proposed consolidation without legal effect. And so that is our position at present, Your Honor. Thank you. Back to Attorney Bolivar. I know uh, you are in co the, the, the agency is in question here, and, that's, and their agency is being utilized to, to find a solution on both sides of this uh, uh, problem. But is that correct? There is that, uh, can you confirm that letter was actually an official letter given by your agency? Um, okay. Uh, let me just clarify that my earlier statement, I made reference to the consent given by PDIC last December 2013, and it was a consent to the proposed consolidation of what was then MBA Consolidated Cooperative Bank. So that was the consent given by PDIC, MBACCB. I also confirm that, yes, there was a letter that was sent to the three proponent banks uh, dated March 20, 2017, where we basically indicated that the consent of PDIC, as uh, we have indicated in our December 2013 uh, letter, um, has expired having an expiry period of only six months reckoned from the uh, reckoned from the date that the banks have fully obtained both PDICs and BSPs approval. But I do not, if uh, with the apology, with uh, sincerest apologies, Mr. Senator, I cannot, uh, however, state the position of PDIC at this point because the issue is now with the courts. So um, we apologize that we cannot go any further. We have to resolve. This, this could be a problem. Uh, Attorney, you know, uh, the Senate always oversteps its boundaries. I'm, an, I'm actually a very, uh, uh, as a chairman, I'm very pragmatic, very practical. But also, uh, the Senate also has to be guided with future amendments to laws. And uh, precisely also wearing the hat of uh, the chairman of the committee on uh, um, trade and industry and commerce. We're trying to uh, uh, streamline and make uh, our processes more efficient. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody is investing in our country. We're, we actually are on top of the heap because of our overseas uh, the contributions of uh, 2.5 billion a month dollars. Mm -hmm. Without that, I'm telling you, baka para tayong, um, Bangladesh, you know, kawawa talaga tayo. Because I've spoken to the ASEAN business group and they're saying we're the worst in terms of investments opportunities. And I'm putting that on record because I meet with them all the time, all the Chamber of Commerce of the different countries. And they said, uh, in spite of the fact of such difficult regulatory frameworks, they're trying to make business in our country. And so the same goes with the PDIC. You're under auspices. I mean, you're part of a government and we're all part of our... Of, of government here. We have to see how we can correct this. Mm -hmm. uh, not only with PDIC, and I'm not only targeting PDIC, I'm also talking about uh, BSP of a new governor on helm, and together with the CDA, you know, which I constantly badger and call uh, every now and then. So going to that um, attorney, um, what, so what now? Um, what is going to happen now? Can they operate? Can this hypothetical bank now operate? That, that is the question there, because according to, to other government agencies, they can operate. Mm -hmm. um, or they recognize uh, the bank as operable and, uh, and, and legal, no? hypothetically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now there's one agency that says they're not, and now there is a conflict. And you know, last night I was in the party of the birthday party of Sunny Angara, and I also, had several business people 
And just for the record, because I didn't really enjoy the party because everybody was complaining to me <laughs> as chairman of the, the trade industry and commerce. Sakit pala ng ulo ng community. <laughs> Mas madali na ako chairman ng environment. Pero they were complaining to me about the PCC, the Philippines, which we will tackle in a future, uh, in a future uh, committee hearing in my committee. Uh, well, three different uh, big companies had complained to me that uh, same issue, mergers of particular groups for particular business deals are being stopped by the PCC because under the law, one billion or any amount, uh, any transaction uh, over one billion has to be reviewed by the PCC. And several months have transpired, some applications, years, na hindi pa na ano. So, ang, uh, sabi nila, how can we create this company? How can we hire people? How can we, how can we invest? How can our, our partners now want to live? Gulo, gulo. Because we created this PCC that now is reviewing everything and not coming out with the uh, decisions uh, immediately. And because of that, nakatiwangwang lahat itong mergers, uh, acquisitions, uh, uh, you know, uh, creations of new corporations, investments of foreign direct, uh, investments coming from abroad. So that's why I asked you know, Attorney Bolivar, as General Counsel for BDIC, you have your Manager Legal Service Department, and I'll probably ask the same question during budget hearing. Uh, I'm sure that the, the financial agencies will be here. Uh, together with Ma'am uh, Ed Eden Dyson, what, what uh, processes uh, are required or must be done to streamline this particular issue? Because this now is a particular case wherein uh, everything is almost done, but because PDIC has not come up with a resolution of the case, uh, what will happen to them? Who will, will they be able to operate? Will Bukino and Corporate Bank be able to operate? Because if they cannot be, uh, operate and everything is, uh, uh, will it be status quo? Because if it is not status quo, who's going to pay the salaries of the general managers of BCB? And the staff, how many staff do you have there? And manage, ilan tao ba yung BCB? 80. 80. 80. 80. So, 80 yan. Uh, sino magbibigay ng, ng sweldo sa kanila? Uh, and transactions of depositors, that's correct. My staff just pointed out something uh, that's very important because then the depositors, if they, if they shut down, how will the depositors withdraw their, their deposits? So, uh, attorney, what is the plan of action of the PDIC in future uh, cases like this? Um, well, I've, as I've stated earlier, uh, Mr. Senator, we, of course, BSP and PDIC recognize that each agency has uh, mandatory requirements in cases of mergers consolidation or acquisition. Uh, that's why, that's how I started my statement earlier. And in fact, recognizing these requirements from, from both the PDIC and uh, the P BSP, we entered into this memorandum of agreement where we put in place the framework. The process flow is there. The timeline is uh, stated. The documentary requirements have been harmonized um, and uh, the periods uh, for the validity of the consent have also been provided in that memorandum of agreement. Um, again, that is in recognition that there are other regulatory agencies that will uh, have mandatory requirements. Um, so we I cannot directly um, respond to the questions um, affecting the banks involved, but um, I just would like to say that uh, PDIC is uh, PDIC is cognizant of the fact that, given that there is already an agreement between the BSP and PDIC, the process in terms of obtaining consent from both the BSP and PDIC. Uh, should not be in question anymore. Um, in fact, um, since this is just an agreement between PDIC and BSP, we have in initiated discussions also with the SEC to get SEC um, 
in the loop and also even the Philippine uh, Competition Commission. We've initiated discussions so that all the agencies and of course now the CDA can harmonize all the documentary requirements and of course uh, not to put additional burden on the on the stakeholders or the banks in this particular case. Um, I just want to emphasize that the reason why uh, the law required that um, merger consult our charter required that PDIC's consent, prior written consent, be obtained is primarily for the protection of the depositors. Uh, it's important that the proposed consolidation merger acquisition is viable such that at the end of the day, instead of just saving one bank, we might end up with say, but we might end up saving um, or addressing a bigger problem if the transaction doesn't become viable. So um, that basically is the objective. And yes, we do recognize that there's a need for the harmonization of the requirements and the timelines uh, among the government agencies. Just a reminder, you know, we're of the process of, we're already in the period of amendments. The House has passed it. The President has declared it as a priority bill. Uh, this is the expanded uh, Anti-Red Tape Act, which is the Ease of Doing Business Act. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder to all agencies, now it's 30 days. You're only going to have to give. Once all the documentary requirements have been met, duly stamped as received by your officers, a bond will be issued. The date starts there. Uh, no action upon the document after 30 working days is considered approved. And no action of approval on the particular issue now will merit criminal liability. Hindi lang po civil, hindi lang po yung from Civil Service Commission uh, administrative cases. So, yan ang direction ng Presidente. As a matter of fact, he reiterated it last Monday during our dinner meeting as one of his top priorities to move forward with business, a very welcoming business climate in our country. This is, and I consider the 30 days as nasa inyong, ano yan eh, nasa inyong, um, as, as uh, complex transactions involving um, more uh, technical industries like banking, finance, chemical plants, power plants, etc., etc. Because simple transactions now under our new uh, expanded anti-red tape, Three days for many uh, simple transactions. These are for MSMEs uh, and more complex MSMEs, seven working days. But for other complex government transactions, it's 30 working days. Actually, ako mo bait nga ako gusto ko 30 working days. Ang gusto ni Senator Ping? 10, no? 10 working days, which I think is not doable because, for example, ito nga, yung problema sa banko uh, or you need ECCs for particular complex uh, uh, businesses and power plants and whatever plant, no? petrochemical plants. In the current 10 working days, it's impossible. We don't, we won't be able to comply with that. And I don't want to jail also our civil servants to put them to jail. So, among the other 30 working days, but 30 working days is actually very high in the norm of things. Because uh, we have the World Bank as a global competitiveness index, and we are actually over the 100th mark. So, malayo na tayo. New Zealand got all the fractions within one to two days, and it's all online. So, uh, we'd like to streamline, as you said, no? and harmonize. So, I hope that can be done when we approve the law. Uh, we can do this as quickly as possible. Yes, sir, Chairman. If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's so nice to hear uh, Tony Bolivar stating about harmonizing, but I'd just like to propose something here. Uh, in strengthening pro the steering program for cooperative banks, uh, we have members like BSP, Land Bank, and uh, PDIC. But Mr. Chairman, uh, CD is not there. CD is not included in that. So if I may propose that included, uh, CD be included in that strengthening program. Thank you so much. Strengthening program that you mentioned, Chairman, who's the lead agency? Is it BSP? So, ma'am, please uh, uh, relay that to Governor Espinilla na na isama na natin yung Central Bank because maraming cooperative banks all over the Philippines I mean sorry, CDA uh, sama na po natin ang CDA sa, sa usapin na ito but Mr. Chairman, we'd like to clarify that the program has already expired actually last September 2016 
So it expired already. So actually, Getting this one is a previous. Uh, in the future, we will consider. In the future, yeah, please consider the BSP. Okay. Um, I have to do a restroom break. <laughs> As uh, I am only human, uh, since I have no other colleagues here to continue the discussion, I'd like a five-minute uh, recess, and then I will go to the other, um, yung ating mga ibang resource persons at guests nandito po, para mag-comment dito sa issue na ito, particularly on the uh, merger of uh, cooperative banks. So, nandyan si Attorney Michael, nandyan po si uh, Mr. Prudencio, uh, Attorney Hubert, and Mr. Sagani, and of course, we'll go back to our... Uh, Hypothetical banks that are here. <laughs> when I say hypothetical, but I will not be subjudice. But uh, on the issues of the hypothetical issues that we may encounter in the future. So I would uh, like to ask for a five minute uh, recess.
All right, this committee is uh, called back to order. Um, we'd now like to recognize, before we recognize the other um, uh, stakeholders here, we'd like to recognize the group of uh, Sir Calixto. If you have uh, other statements before we move on to uh, the other stakeholders. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We want to comment on the issue that the, the requirements for consolidation have been completely submitted. Now, we want to clear this, that the plan of consolidation is not the output of the technical working group because our chairman and our manager is a member of the technical working group that was created uh, on in 2012 and not even a single meeting that was held until now so if that is that is uh, submitted that is not a product of the technical working group and under the, the law the procedure of consolidation, it clearly stated that the technical working group shall be consist of, uh, it is not technical working group that is being used, it, I think it is a committee or something like a, a joint committee. It is stated there that a joint committee composed of representatives from the constituent bank shall formulate the, the plan of consolidation, which is not happening in this particular issue. And when Bukidon Coop Bank withdrew its uh, letter for holding in abeyance to CDE, it does not mean uh, when we say that the issues and concern were resolved in that particular meeting, it does, it does not mean that we actually received the actual resolution of the issues and concerns that we have raised. Only the premises that we will be doing this, we will be going this, so that uh, to resolve all this issue. And that is why we withdraw. Because uh, as Spanish, the time, uh, the period from the issuance of the certificate of authority, a uh, certificate of registration by CDE, to the period of issuance of certificate of authority by BSP is more than enough to address all these issues and concern. So that is why we were uh, convinced to withdraw. However, when the certificate of registration was uh, before that, the been mentioned of a transition period that might last uh, for about five years because of so many things that we need to stress out. But when the certificate of registration from CDE was issued, everything uh, has changed. Uh, because they said they, we have no more entity, we have no more legal personality, and that is why we need to uh, operate as one. Then we are uh, uh, objecting because what particular direction that we are going to follow when there is no specific plan of consolidation. So uh, when we propose a three-year uh, three uh, transition, because as earlier mentioned, it is then to who mentioned first the five year. So we propose the three year so that we will be given enough or ample time to, is, to stress all the issues and concern, particularly on the hiring. Because until now we cannot, uh, we cannot find any, any qualification of every position which we are always uh, repeatedly told them. So, wala pa rin hanggang ngayon. So, we don't want na ito ang magiging uh, sanhi. So, wala pa rin. So, and they told us that transition is not uh, provided in the consolidation. That is why no transition that will happen. So, we, we uh, disagree on that. And that is why we say that if there is a specific or clear-cut policy on transition on the uh, stated on the plan of consolidation, all this uh, controversy will not arise. Meaning, uh, this controversy is due to the absence of that specific uh, guidelines that is supposedly uh, written in the plan of consolidation. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, uh, Sir Calixto, no, uh, gusto ko ano ta fair ta din hi. I want to be fair to all sides. 
you know, Bukidnon Development Bank is part of, is, is, is uh, from Bukidnon, of course, where I'm from. Misamis Occidental is, uh, Oriental is also my adopted uh, province. Uh, mahal ko din yung mga taga Misamis Oriental. Um, looking at this objectively, remember in our first meeting that you approached me, I said, why did you not object in the board meetings? Uh, uh, and, and that is a question that I throw to you uh, now, that there was no objection when uh, in the 11-man board, uh, seven was given to um, Misamis Oriental and four was given to BCD. And um, uh, there was no objection on the part of BCD. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it only now I see that it's a, a bit clear that the complaint stemmed from the fact that there was an election of officers. It seems, no? It's an election of officers. And uh, hindi tayo nanalo dun sa of certain, certain positions were not were not won, and because of that, uh, the group did not anymore attend the succeeding board meetings. Because you have to look at it from the stand also, from where I stand as chair. I have to be very fair in my position. But I don't want to comment further because I filed a case in court. So now I will respect, as a matter of fact, I was meeting with the Court of Appeal Justice in, outside, and I just mentioned to her that uh, we should always respect the courts. So we go, unlike some of my colleagues who do not like to respect uh, the courts and want to abolish them. In this case, I completely respect the decision of the courts on this issue because if we do not, then definitely there will be anarchy on all three forms of government, all three uh, uh, co-equal branches of government, diba? So, wala na rin. Di na rin ako magko-comment dyan. Kasi nagpahal na rin kayo. So, I cannot make a comment uh, in this particular hearing and we will await the decision of the court. My uh, apprehension lang there is really, anong mangyayari dun sa mga tao ninyo? Because uh, uh, the question there, will it operate? Will it be status quo? The court has to decide, to make a decision very quick if it's going to be status quo or, or not, or they'll come up with the resolution of the case quickly because then uh, the depositors will be uh, problematic here and also the employees of all three banks concerned. So, uh, I think quick legal action there is, uh, uh, is necessary. So, with that, moving forward, you know, I would like to now uh, recognize our uh, stakeholders. Uh, Mr. Sagani Daba, Chief Executive, uh, Executive and Chief Operating Officer of CISP CCB. Ano po yung CISP CCB po? CISP is Cooperative Insurance System of the Philippines. CCB is Consolidated Corp Bank. It's actually a consolidation of Cooperative Bank of Dabao Sur, Surigao Sur, and Misamis Occidental. Ah, merge na. The first. Comment niyo, hindi dito sa kaso nila, but ano pong comment niyo on the framework and policies? Actually, we have been, me personally, been involved in merger consolidation since 2007 of co-op banks. And it's not really that easy. It's quite difficult because uh, you are, you are trying to, uh, in a sense, marry people na hindi naman love yung, ano, <coughs> yung basis of the marriage. Money. Practicality. Money. No? Uh, sa akin is, maganda sana if we can just have one cooperative bank. Uh, even if we combine all, it's still a very small fraction of the total banking industry. Talagang napakaliit pa rin. So, but then, the reality is, it's not that easy. So that's why what we did when we merged, for example, with uh, Dabao Sur, Surigao Sur, and Misamis Occidental, ang ginawa namin, ang nakikita ko lang, I mean, I hope lesson can be learned from this. Kahit na lima yung pwede namin board kunin, tatlo lang kinuha namin, binigay namin sa iba yung ibang position. Tsaka sa amin yung chair, binigay namin yung vice chairmanship sa ibang, ano. I mean, you have to recognize that as part of the culture, groups want to be recognized. They want to also be part of uh, the the team that will uh, pursue. So, you know, nakikita ko dito ano na I hope these things can be recognized by the players. Uh, it's really unfortunate that tapos na yung ano. Basically, I think the blessing was already given by the priest, and then one of the parties said, "Ayaw ko na." No, so it's very unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. So, 
<laughs> yung yun lang, yun lang. I mean, I, I hope uh, this, this still can resolve uh, the issues that uh, are bothering them. Very good insight, uh, sir. That, that's correct also. Uh, we also have to sometimes in these mergers and acquisitions, even with partnerships, recognize the psyche of the Filipino psyche and uh, cultural and traditional, you know, um, uh, cultural and traditional character of uh, the Filipinos. No? Okay. So, baka matapos na ito, bigyan mo na magandang position yung grupo na yun, uh, ayos na. Hypothetically. <laughs> Attorney Hubert Pina, you're now recognized. <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just want to point out that uh, the, the operation of a bank is very sensitive. And this kind of conflict should be, uh, first, should be avoided. Second, should be handled with utmost care. Because uh, uh, any conflict uh, between the stakeholders would unduly uh, panic or cause panic and alarm to uh, the depositors, which would invite the... Uh, influx of withdrawals and in such case no bank can survive and uh, it is uh, for this reason that uh, uh, I want also to point out the provision of the uh, Republic uh, Act 9520 on alternative mode of uh, settling disputes instead of going to the court uh, why not try first the uh, mediation and conciliation at the earliest early stages of the conflict so that it will not uh, in the lalaki. And then third one, nabanggit uh, kanina about the provision or alternative of uh, one of the uh, parties where they can withdraw their shares. As a, uh, although that is allowed under uh, the co code, uh, we are also governed by uh, the laws of uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. I'm referring to uh, the General Banking Act, where uh, in case of withdrawal of members, necessarily there would be acquiring of shares, of its own shares. I mean, uh, the bank will acquire its own shares. And in such case, it will require the approval first of the uh, uh, Banco Central ng Pilipinas. So, again, if all the members, or my, well, a number of the members will uh, withdraw the shares, it, and uh, it will come to the knowledge of the uh, depositors, again, it will cause panic and alarm. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chairman. And a very welcome insight um, from Attorney Molina. Tama yun, kasi pinag-uusapan natin dito, depositors and deposits. Um, so, we have to be sensitive with that. That not to cause panic with these uh, individuals. Uh, Mr. Prudential Consolation of the Cooperative Banks Federation of the Philippines. Uh, sir. Thank you, uh, Chairman, Mr. Senator. Well, uh, being one of uh, the leader of uh, Bank Coop, I've seen the situation of these different uh, consolidated banks, starting from Dabao and CCB. Uh, MCCB na naman. NCCB, the Network Consolidated Bank, and MCCB is the Mandanao. And the last was uh, the two Ilocos, Ilocos Norte and Ilocos Sur. So, one, one of the weaknesses of this uh, consolidating bank is that uh, they should go first, or they should undergo first a training for two days regarding the transition period, redundancy of uh, different positions, organizational structure from the board down to the management level, which is both acceptable to all of them. Wala yung suluhan, wala yung kwan. Wherein I had presented that to the Locus uh, Consolidated co Bank, and the board is amenable. So, I've consulted the uh, Chris uh, or Jetmal of uh, the Trust Management Center based in uh, Singapore, who is a consultant and training, training provider of the different government agencies in our country. That we design a totally seminar for this uh, uh, consolidated mer or merging banks. Para pwede pa silang matrust kung ayaw nila yung magiging pros and cons or tutuloy after the today's seminar. So, <laughs> These are the, the, the weaknesses 
among those uh, three consolidated banks, which is uh, which consists eleven banks. So hopefully that uh, with this uh, training design that uh, we have uh, undertaken with the consultant, I think all issues in the future of the consolidation and merger of these different co bank be resolved. Thank you, Mr. Senator. With, all, with those three insights, I think now it's incumbent of the chairman. No? Chairman, before you go on with this, make sure ironclad yung mga agreements na papayag sila mag-merger. Next time we approve the the uh, request no, for mergers, I think your people should not just take it at face value, uh, all the documents submitted to you. I think what you should do is you should send a team there to each and every co-op bank and make sure that it is a unanimous move. It is not without... Uh, I mean, it, it's without uh, controversy. I think it makes life easier for everybody, uh, Chairman. Uh, Welcoming from you, Honorable uh, Senator. Uh, we welcome all of those outpourings of suggestions. But I do believe that the guidelines, as they are provided for by the law, is complete by themselves. But I guess it's just additional extra uh, work from the regulatory agency, the CDA, that we have to go further as a, as a what are the lessons provided for by this particular case. But yung sabi ni uh, Mr. Daba earlier in one co bank, you know what, Mr. Senator, we realized that in series of meetings with the banks, kasi po with the entry of hundreds of millions of dollars coming from different countries because of the Asian economic community, I do believe, uh, Mr. Senator, that this is now the fear of our co banks and that of, our, of those cooperatives involved in credit and savings. Because even the offerings of those banks are very uh, low already that are really competing with the co-op banks into this kind of work. And so, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Senator, that is what also that I would like to share with you as our champion in the Senate. Siguro po, we really have to create a conducive environment, policy environment, positive laws that would really, uh, kasi sasabi nila yung mga laws po natin, as if we are in the war, economic war, with one has nakatali po. I can cite so, so many, sir, but siguro in due time we'll say that because we already have a lot of meetings on this. And you, sir, as our champion in Senate, should really know about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Now, we'll uh, continue naman our hearings. Uh, and we still have to tackle uh, the issue on strengthening the CDA, the creation of the cooperative uh, uh, department. Diba? So that is uh, still something that we have to hurdle. I'm just awaiting uh, direction from the DBM and uh, national government agencies on that issue. Uh, and so once we get uh, feedback from whether positive or negative, then we can uh, work accordingly. Kasi ang problema natin na yan dito sa cooperative on the strengthening of the co We have a law. We have the RA 9520. It's now trying to strengthen the CDA to make you more relevant with the law. Uh, but I agree with you. Like Thailand, when I was in Thailand recently, they have a Department of Cooperatives merged with the Department of Agriculture. So priority talaga nila, and even Korea and all this, they give high levels of importance to the cooperative sector. Kaya yung farmers from, from farm to market talagang kanilang stream, yung, yung flow no? is all uh, members of cooperatives. So uh, I hear you, and we'll be ta tackling that when we start session next week. Um, Ma'am Sylvia, ako ng kababayan taga Bukid noon. What is your comment, uh, uh, Ma'am Sylvia, Sylvia Paraguya, the chairman of the it's Network Consolidated Cooperatives of uh, a Bank of Coop Natco? Yeah. Uh, Mayada sa salam, Senator. Thank you for the invitation to be here. NCCB is the consolidation of six cooperative banks. Probably the with the consolidation of the most number of banks, six. Uh, that means we have two from uh, Region 5, the Sorsogon and Camarines Norte, two from Leyte, Maasin and Ormoc. Then you have uh, one from Rojas and Agusan del Sur. Uh, what we did in the consolidation, uh, why did NAPCO come in? Because we are the first to be under the strengthening program of Coop Banks. There was a time when there was a good number of co-banks being closed. So 
the congressman Pae spoke in Congress that we should look at a strengthening program. So ito ngayon, and we were looking at the six core banks, and we have a good number of members who own this bank. So pag nasara sila, our members will also lose. So NAPCO came in as the strategic third-party investor. The role of the strategic third-party investor is to make sure that the capital adequacy ratio will be 15%. And the total capital should be 100 millions. And in this case, there were three weak banks, small banks. One bank was just around 20 million. The primary cops are bigger than these banks. Then three relatively stronger. Uh, even if the three had a negative, we gave them a seat in the board. Even if NATCO has the most <coughs> exposure, we have seven boards, one is for NATCO, then we had representatives from each of the constituent banks. So the spirit is to, to make sure that even in the future, somebody will come from these areas, for example, maybe one from Region 5, one from Region 8, because that is the spirit of co-ops. We want to see the participation and representation from this area. So masking negative, even if they didn't bring in anything. They had the chair sat in the board. So, yun yung nangyari sa amin. Right now, tama yun, Senator, very difficult. You, you have six cultures, six processes, six standards, six, six products. Now we are in the difficult part of integration. And BSP has seen that because even if you are now consolidated, you can still see at one point the silos, the operations of the, the six constituent banks. So that's where we are right now. We, we, are, we are in that stage. We were one since 2014. We're almost three years. But still, we, we have done the structures, the salaries. That's a lot of work. Uh, but in the board, hindi doon ang problema. It's how we strengthen our management, how we strengthen our operations. So the role of PDIC is to bring the car to zero. Land Bank will raise it to 10%. Then the role of NATCO is to raise it to 15%. Right now, uh, we're still complying with some requirements because in the integration process, you will see our difficulties. And that's why we still have to comply with requirements of the, the BSP. But in the governance side, hindi yun ang aming problema right now. It's on how we improve some more our operations. And hopefully, uh, the strengthening program with the infusions can really bring in more uh, uh, improvements in the operations of the bank. Thank you. So you're going through all these uh, birth pains and uh, baby steps. So, well, that, that's good inputs as well. Uh, maybe you can share it later on with the chairperson and the uh, in the committee, could we have, um, could we ask your the uh, COPNATCO and your particular banks, and as well as the other stakeholders here, to submit to us uh, uh, a briefer no, on what uh, uh, the difficulties that you go through, uh, suggestions that you can make, so that uh, when we come up with the committee report, may lagay po natin yan uh, for, uh, and, and maybe you know we could come up with the legislation as well uh, to to help uh, these processes improve. So, Ma'am Ma Sylvia. I, I think one of the things we're looking at is yung dos ribayon dun sa ating co-op banks because uh, if we lend our own members, then that's that's an issue. So, yun yung isa sa hurdles that we're... Because in the typical co-op, if you're not a bank, then it's okay if you lend to, to your own. But now, because you're a co-op bank, parang hindi, hindi po pwede yun. But, yeah, yung standardization is also a lot of work and and we're, we're doing it on our own so we are fully computerized we we are online but uh beyond the system yung the capacities of the people that you need to upgrade uh yun yung third year na hindi pa rin kami tapos the transition that you're saying na uh, six months Maybe if you enforce martial law, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> I understand, Ma'am Sylvia, because if, like any merger and acquisitions and uh, uh, consolidations, if you're a more, uh, if you have an efficient uh, business climate and you buy into a company that has a more of a mom and pop 
uh, operation. Napakahirap nun uh, to streamline it. Uh, it's hard to change some basic um, uh, yung ano nila, yung uh, some, there's intricacies in this merger where you have to change some basic uh, characters of of uh, the, the, the new the new stakeholders. So, tama po yun. Uh, now I'd like to recognize we're okay naman with the PDIC, no? Uh, I think you want to uh, evoke, uh, invoke your right to remain silent at <laughs> this point of time. But uh, yun nga lang, ma'am, let's just take, uh, take note that uh, we're trying to streamline all and, and simplify all these requirements for future mergers because, like, as I can see, there will be more uh, coming towards your way. So, Chairman, okay naman tayo. We'll, we'll give you a uh, chance. No, what I will do is I'll recognize the three uh, key uh, sectors here to give their parting statements. But we'd like to also recognize Land Bank of the Philippines. Uh, they play a key role here. Uh, they're one of the um, creditors of, or I think the, the creditors for most of these banks. Um, we would like to listen to, uh, is it going to be you, ma'am? Uh, Good morning, Glessie, sir. Oh, I see. Programs uh, Management Programs Department. Management Department. Ma'am yes. Glessie Angeles. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Senator, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you know, uh, cooperative banks uh, have been our vital partners for almost three decades in providing credit assistance to the small farmers and fishers and MSMEs in the countryside. So as our vital partners, uh, we want uh, the management want to see our partners are, are also strong and viable. That's why we joined this strengthening program for uh, cooperative banks. So under the program, um, land bank uh, will come in when the consolidation and merger is consummated. So the so by doing that, we have the option to avail of um, uh, credit assistance to beef up their operations, and then of course the equity investment in the form of preferred shares. Um, there is also a requirement that under the program, the sh the surviving bank should have met uh, the hundred million uh, uh, net worth and uh, capital adequacy ratio of fifteen percent. So our arrangement to Norman is uh, land bank will provide 100% of the capital requirement to bring the capital adequacy ratio of the weak bank from 0 to 10. So CPDIC po from um, negative to 0. Yun po yung aming role. So right now po, um, we need to be a strong partner of the cooperative banks. In fact, in fact uh, 12 uh, cooperative banks, uh, we have uh, exposure of about 1.3 billion and we also have equity investment of around 500 million to some cooperative banks. Thank you, sir. I always love the Land Bank of the Philippines to be the most compliant bank when it comes to uh, assisting cooperatives and MSMEs. Pinapalakpakan ko kayo palagi pag may mga Thank hearings. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yung kulang pa. And I mentioned this nga to to Governor Spinia when we had a, when was my talk sa ASEAN Business Conference, kasama ko po siya, and we mentioned nga the, the lack of compliance of, uh, of bigger banks. They'd rather pay the fines, but at least Land Bank is uh, putting their money where their mouth is and they're really supporting the sector. So, salamat po. Uh, keep up the good work. So, okay na po tayo sa <laughs> Attorney Burigas of the Meto South Cooperative Bank. Ano po yung maitutulong po ninyo na sa tingin nyo ay uh, lalong gumanda ang uh, sitwasyon ninyo? Okay. Um, Meto South Cooperative Bank po is a bank located in Makati with 821 members all throughout the Philippines. Uh, first, regarding, regarding the issue, regarding the issue, I think uh, we really need to wait for the court because if the court, the only issue here is to decide whether or not there is already a confirmed and approved merger and consolidations and if that will be resolved, then everything will be resolved. However, some are contesting just an issue of technicality as to the, as to some uh, effectivity of the, of the uh, approval of the uh, merger. Now, 
in, in relation to some plan of mergers, I think both the parties must be reminded that in plan of the mergers or the technical working group, uh, plan of mergers is being um, uh, is being drafted by by both parties. Okay, so if you agree to the the plan of mergers, well, if if at the end you have to question any any provisions in the plan, I think uh, you should do that before before the plan or during the planning sessions. But after, I think uh, it would not be proper to question anymore regarding the plan, whether or not you read it or not, it's it's our role to, to read it. It's our, our, our primary role to uh, know everything in the in, 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 in the plan. If we don't read it, it, well, it's our negligence on our part if we will not uh, read it. Now, I would like to speak in relation to the cooperative bank from the essence of being a cooperative. Uh, we all know that the cooperative, by its nature and by its, uh, by its work, it's really for the purpose of uh, helping <laughs> it's helping the members, actually. It's helping the members. All, is, all, is, all the issues here are for the members. It's for the benefit of the members. It's actually participations of the members and for the benefit of the members. Probably all of us here probably are all leaders of the bank, but let me just remind the leadership style that is given to us by the great leader of all leaders, Jesus Christ. As I mentioned, that um, he took it that robbery. Actually, uh, though he is a good reputation, he took it that robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of man and made a servant. Meaning to say, if somehow leaders can agree properly, even though everybody is wanting for recognitions and we want all to be recognized, but, but I think uh, sometimes the recognitions, our recognitions sometimes uh, can be subjected to the benefit of many, to the benefit of many. Meaning to say, if we want to be recognized, but I think me as a leader of the cooperative, I am here not just for the sake of being recognized as a leader, but I am here in representations of the members, and I think my, my, my role and main functions is for the benefit and to look for the benefit. Kasi nakikita po natin, medyo pag hindi, pag tumagalang issue, kawawa yung mga empleyado. Kawawa yung mga empleyado, okay? So, hindi natin malalaman kung <laughs> saan ba talaga sila kukuha. And beside from that, hindi lang yung mga empleyado ang kawawa pag hindi na-resolvan eh. Kung pwede nga magkaroon nila ng amicable settlement at mas maayos ang mas mabuti, the earlier the possible, mas mabuti. Kasi hindi lang po mga trabahador ang kawawa, kundi yung mga miyembro noong mga nire-represent na kooperatiba na miyembro ng banko. Kasi ang banko, for example, yung banko niya, marami pong kooperatiba na miyembro. At yung kooperatiba ngayon, kung po ang uh, Members, baka nga minsan walang alam yung mga miyembro na tunay na may-ari ng kooperatiba na miyembro ng banko. Baka nga yung iba doon, walang alam kung ano ang nangyayari sa uh, right now. What they know is they have the money. Ang alam nila, napapatronize sila ng product. Pero hindi nila nalalama. Baka minsan may rivalry as authority na pala doon sa loob. And uh, hindi nila alam, hindi na pala napoprotektahan talaga yung kanilang interest. This is just a word of reminders. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Tony Miguel. Parang pastor ka. Ang galing ha. Yes, pa. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Pastor na. Pastor na. Tony pa. Okay. The last thing we'll give to the BSP. So, sa PDIC, okay naman po kayo. You want to share anything else? With PDIC, Tony? Well, we just really want to emphasize that PDIC is here primarily for the depositors. And, you know, I'm actually glad to hear uh, from Mr. Daba, uh, a recognition that banking business is one that's impressed with public interest. Banks deal with the public. Banks deal with the people. So that is the reason why uh, there are requirements under the law for uh, consent approvals from the regulatory agencies. Um, and in the and in part, in this particular case where. Uh, PDIC, in addition to protecting the interest, is also going to face credit risk in the form of financial assistance that will be extended to the to the proposed consolidated bank. Um, we're talking about public funds that will be lent out to the proposed consolidated banks. That's why it's important that PDIC make that determination that the proposed consolidation is in fact viable. So thank you, Mr. Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you very much for that. Um, Chairman, uh, would you if like I to? may, uh, Mr. <coughs> Senator. Uh, hey, would, do you want me to recognize uh, your other partners in the PDIC? Okay, no? 
Thank you. So, Chairman? And Mr. Seldon really appear in this committee, but uh, allow me first to express the utmost gratitude of the cooperative movement in the Philippines for championing the cause of cooperativism, especially on the issue of taxation. I know for one, I appeared in so many meetings with you, and I can see your passion on how you champion. And we thank you, sir, uh, uh, Honorable Senator, because when the cooperative movement uh, has none of this, they say, I thank God we have Senator Saberi there. And then when uh, these issues on Marawi crop up, and I was there a week ago, I did not know, Senator, that you were there pala ang mantago pa. Sabi ko, the highest uh, official of the land, sir, ikayo po yun. Sabi niya, and si Senator Saberi, nandun po ako sa Baluy recently, and they were thanking you because there were 40,000 refugees there at the job assistant, actually. And recently, you know, for a fact, sir, that I also came here because of another very important issue. And I know that we had to have this uh, investigated and all. But uh, on this issue, um, Mr. Senator, we thank you because uh, this is an issue that I believe, according to, well, Attorney Molina earlier, is very critical and crucial because if there's panic and all, then, kaya nga sabi namin, and I thank you for that, uh, I think, Mr. Senator, you know, the imperative need of our office being strengthened. And that we should have this power, quasi judicial, and all of this should really be, uh, city should be empowered so that we can go an extra mile. Because every time we're going to inspect further or investigate, oh, excuse me, you are violating the principle of subsidiarity. You see that? You know, problema. And so we can only go by what is provided for uh, by the law, Mr. Chairman. But be that as it may, I guess that somehow this particular session is very important. So thank you for that, Mr. Senator. Thank you, Chairman. We appreciate your hands-on approach on these uh, yeah. issues and your prompt response. Yeah. Thank you, and we really are going to strengthen you one way or another. Uh, we will make it happen this term. Thank you, Chairman. Ma'am Chuchi, um, you have the floor. Uh, how can we, um, well, I, I'm sure we'll expect uh, action from the BSP and hopefully things like this won't happen again. Ma'am Chuchi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, as a regulator, the last thing that we'd like to see is for, let's say, a bank to fail. That's why we have programs like this to help also those uh, banks encountering some problems you could, cannot really also avoid because banking is a business, uh, actually. But it is also re very much imbued with uh, uh, public interest given that uh, you serve depositors, you serve the banking needs of clients. And so with that kind of uh, um, situation, Mr. Chairman, is the call of the BSP is for parties. Uh, I'm not re really uh, referring to, to the current uh, um, situation being discussed, but uh, in, all, in all cases wherein there may be some um, disagreements, um, the call of the regulator is there is always a way to, to talk and discuss. And I think um, BSP for that matter is not yet, uh, is not actually yet giving up on, on those uh, parties, let's say, that uh, may have disagreements. They, they may just take a step back, uh, a step back and try to see not just the conflict or the disagreement, if you can call it, but try to see the bigger picture. And when it's say a bigger picture, it will involve not just the officers themselves, the directors themselves, but all stakeholders, and that would include depositors and even the members as well of the cooperatives uh, who are also um, having interest in the bank, the, the primary cooperatives. So the members of the primary cooperatives also would surely uh, want um, an agreement to be reached, Mr. Chairman. So that's actually, uh, BSP is still hoping for the best, of course, for, for this kind of situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ma'am Chuchi. <clears throat> actually, uh, today's hearing has been an eye-opener for myself as well, because most of the issues that we tackle, Chairman, are um, problems with the implementation of RA 9520, taxation. It's mostly taxation. Suki na kayo sa akin dito sa taxation eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fight between cooperatives. So, very important really is conflict resolution. And it's actually embodied in our law. Um, but prior to that, 
now we are forewarned that definitely we need to look at the safeguards and, and uh, processes so that um, hindi na aabot sa conflict resolution. So siguro, Chairman, gawa natin ang policy yan. Uh, upuan natin yan together with my committee. Uh, lalo lalo na sa, like I said, men like I mentioned, the shareholders agreement, which is basically the uh, agreement of uh, articles of consolidation. So we have to strengthen that. Uh, but uh, we don't have to reach uh, that point, no? this point the point of the hypothetical uh, fight between two <laughs> organizations. So with my friends from Bukidnon and my friends from Misamis Oriental, I'm hoping uh, maybe we could end it there unless you go to Red. I'm just hoping that maybe there's still some, it can be resolved no? uh, amicably. Um, for the benefit, uh, I will recognize you. I will have to recognize the other. Uh, I'm hoping that we can resolve this amicably. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, for the sake, as mentioned earlier by Mr. Daba and uh, Attorney Bolivar, uh, the banking industry is imbued with a lot of uh, public interest because these are uh, the funds of uh, the public involved. And um, so, sana maayos natin to sa madaling panahon. And if it will go to the course of uh, the judicial process, I hope that they will also decide quickly because, uh, again, no, people's uh, uh, investments here are at stake. So with that, uh, maraming salamat po. I hope you have a safe trip back to all your provinces. And thank you to all the government uh, offices that are here today. Thank you very much. God bless you all.